Hi, I'm John Taylor. These are records in my life. Hi guys, thanks for tuning into Records in My Life. We're here with a man that doesn't need an introduction, but I will give him one anyway. This is John Taylor from Duran Duran. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Charles. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Can you? Yeah. Well, what's going on lately with the band? Oh, well, we're in Edmonton today. Uh, we played here last night. We're up to Calgary tonight. We're, we're doing. We're kind of winding down the Paper Gods tour, which has been sort of on and off over the last two years it's been a great uh, it's been a great run we've been been uh, we've been all over the world with it I mean we got a lot of energy out of that album and um, yeah I mean everybody everybody in the band's getting along and uh, yeah. you know uh, life life's life's good so let's let's go back a couple of years to what album really inspired you to start playing music well you know, I, I had to. It had to be a Beatles album, you know, because because the Beatles, you know, f- from who I am, they were the they were the key, and uh, you know, and I had to, you know, in, in you know, in order to make the decision of which album, I had to think about what they meant to me, in a kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I decided that the White Album was the album because because that's the album. It's 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 so massive. Yeah. In its, in its ambition and in its range, and it's really—I mean, the Beatles were always so versatile, and you hear it on their early records where they're where they're doing bossa nova and they're doing Motown and they're doing, you know, sw- swing. You know, they're doing—they're they, all over the map. You know, and they learned how to do that in Hamburg. You know, right? And it, inf- in it and it influenced their writing in that they were able to write songs of all different kinds. You know. But the White Album, they really, really stretched out, you know, and you've got, like, Music Concrete. Is that what we call Revolution Number no. 9? You know, where it's, a, it's collage. <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got Hard Rock. You've got Faux Beach Boys. You've got, you know... It, it, and, I, and, I, and now it's, 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 it's my go-to album when I need to be reassured of the possibilities why I'm a sprawling madhouse of a record, <laughs> you know. It really, it really is, and they're 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 all really just hanging on, you know, psychologically by their fingernails, and uh, and you know you do get that, you do get that in the in in, in the album. But there's just so much love, and it, it you know, and there's so much, and it, it it is inclusive. But everybody everybody individually has just got too much to say. Um, I think you have to I think it's one Beatles album that you kind of have to love the Beatles to appreciate it's not for the hmm. occasional Beatles fan right um, but uh, you know it, it, it wrapped up the 60s I mean I, I always feel that like you know for like electric for want of a better term electric rock let's say you know its era was the 1970s and the reason more than and I think the reason it was such a renaissance era, an extraordinary period, was because of the Beatles. It was because of the, what the Beatles, the, the journey that they took in eight years, you know, that they went from essentially like the greatest like youth club band ever to being, you know, uh, to, to being the writers that were able to, to create the White Album, which was, you know, an extraordinarily progressive pop rock masterpiece. Of all time, what would be your favorite dance record to you? Well, I don't know whether I would call it a dance record, but the, 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 the record that I chose that has probably more of the key words that you just used was Prince's Sign of the Times album. Okay. And that was a, you know, a very transitory album. Um, another sprawling madhouse <laughs> of a masterpiece. Yeah. What perhaps was most significant of it was most of the notes on it were played by one person. 
And that was because of how, well, he was a musical genius, but also how technology had begun to happen in a way that you didn't need four guys to make to make a band anymore. You just needed one and electricity, you know, one and, one and a computer. Uh, frustrating album for a musician, uh, for someone who'd, uh, who really my whole, you know, my whole thing was, you know, about this collaborative, you know, this ensemble. It was about musical ensembles. And, you know, uh, I was a believer in bands and, 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 and and Prince really did change that. He was the first real sort of popular artist who, I mean, he would go on stage with a band, but you knew that the records were being made by him in isolation in the studio. You know, and the album came out, I think, in 86, maybe. So we were still into drum machines then. We hadn't quite moved into Pro Tools uh, or Garage Band. That hadn't arrived yet, but, but essentially people were, it was pretty easy for people to generate a beat. I remember we were working on uh, Big Thing when, we, when, when that album came out and it was the first time I noticed like anybody in the band could like, you could, I could come in if I was late hmm. and like, you know, any other band member had been in the studio before me, there was like this really funky thing coming out of the speakers. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, when did you get funky? Don't ask me to plead, it. I mean, I could talk about this second album that I, you know, I wanted an album from the 70s, which was the time that um, I started to develop a more personal relationship with music. And, uh, you know, I was an only child. And, you know, I spent a lot of time alone and in my bed and in my head. And uh, a lot of the sort of English glam rock artists were really great for that because they were, I mean, Bowie, Queen, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of strange voodoo going on there but I, I, I chose Stranded by Roxy Music because yeah. uh, it was an album that I didn't quite get I remember buying it on cassette and I remember being a little disappointed that it didn't it, it sound, the sound had changed from the first two albums Eno Brian Eno had been in the band for the first two albums I loved the single Street Life um, the band that played I really am a big fan of of the rhythm section that played on Stranded, the album after that, Country Life, and the album after that, Siren. John Gustafsson was a bass player from Liverpool. Uh, he'd been in a Mers big Mersey band. And, uh, you know, Roxy Music famously, like, never had a full-time bass player. They changed the bass, by him, changed the bass, bassist up constantly. Uh, but Gustafsson ended up playing on three albums in a row. And the rhythm section with Paul Thompson on those three records, I think he's... I mean, for Roger and I, is a constant and still now source of inspiration. And uh, the, the rhythm section on Stranded is phenomenal. Uh, so you have that. Uh, not that I'm thinking about being a musician yet when I'm, listening right. to, when I'm listening to this. It's a very exotic record. And um, Brian Ferry's writing alludes to a lot of places that any suburban boy might want to go to. There's a song on there called Amazona is a place where, you know, we will go and it's like, and, you, and you, it, 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 it's exotic. The song for Europe, which is the song that, you know, famously he sang, you know, half of it is in uh, French. You know, and you're going, wow, you know, this guy's really sophisticated. You know, and it, it's really taking you, but it's a very... I cried a lot to that record. There's some achingly beautiful moments on that record. Um, and it was, this was a period for me where I would, I would submerge, I started to submerge myself in music. I would leave my own, rea the reality of my own bedroom in the suburbs and I would go underwater into the world of, Ziggy Stardust was another album that I thought about choosing, but, you know, a lot of people have talked about that. I was also a big fan of Mick Ronson's first solo album, Slaughter on 10th Avenue. But Stranded is still an album that I go back to, and actually I got a um, remastered vinyl copy of it recently. Nice. And uh, I was listening to, uh, I think it was uh, Sunrise, Sun Sunrise, which is the last uh, song on the album, which 
I think was kind of Joni Mitchell influenced. And there's a there's a bowed bass on there that I'd never heard before. I'm like, what the hell is that? There's like there's like bowed upright bass. And I look on the credits, and yes, there it is. It was always there all along. But I've been listening to, I've been listening to that album for 40 years, and I never. I've never heard it before, so that's 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 nice, you know, when you can still find something fresh in a record Discovery, that you've been yeah. listening to that, that long. Such a personal relationship with music that, like, I if I'm if I'm trying to create a romantic moment, I would never put music on <laughs> because for because she might just not understand it, and then we're done. You know, unless somebody can go with me, dive as deeply as me, <laughs> right. and even then, I don't even know if I want to, because I'm diving down with John Lennon, I'm diving down with Prince, and I'm diving down with Brian Ferry. Do I really want to take her with me? That's a great... You know, I'm not sure I want to do that. So, yeah, I mean, Marvin Gaye's done it at times, you know, Avalon's done it at times. I mean, actually, what gets girls going, I find, is hip-hop. You know, Kendrick Lamar comes on these yeah. days, then you get ready. Probably the sexiest album that I, the album that that has been doing it for me in the last year has been Solange's album, oh, Seat so at the okay. Table, and uh, that's uh, that's a very seductive album. But again, but it's but it's not an album that you would put on to create a sexy mood, because it's a it's a radical record, you know, and it's a political record, and uh, it's 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 gorgeous. And I was li and one of the things I loved about it when I first got it was the drums. I thought I fucking love I love the way the drums sound on this record. And then I found out she played them. I'm That's like, right. of course, because yeah. they're not they're not like virtuosic, you know, but they're, they're real. But they're but they really they really they really speak the song, you know. So the drums alone are worth uh, are worth listening to. Um, but it's a beautifully produced record and. Uh, you know, and it really has something to say. Again, it's uh, it's transformational. You know, you listen to the entire record. It's a, it's a, it's a it's audacious. It's ambitious. You you li you listen to that album from start to finish. You you force yourself to listen to that album from start to finish. You can't help but be changed by the experience. Not many people are going to do that. That's the interesting thing. You know, I don't know how many people that are going to be watching this. You know, I I challenge you. You know, you know, get that album and listen to it from start to finish. You know. And, uh, and tell me if you don't feel a little bit different about things after you've done it. I mean, the other album is Nevermind the Bollocks by the Sex Pistols. Another example of something being deceptive in its appearing to be so simple. Everybody that heard Anik in the UK, myself included, thought, oh, I can do this. Because I, I can't play either. <laughs> but actually, and then you act, and that, but you try, try and, then, and then for the next three years, how many kids tried to write a song like Anarchy in the UK? Hundreds, thousands. You're not just in Britain, but in, on the West Coast, all over, all over the world, tried to write songs like Pretty Vacant and Anarchy in the UK. How many of them pulled it off? Yeah. 10? The Sex Pistols made me feel like I could be a musician. That was what they gave me. And, um, and that, it was the blunt force trauma of Anarchy in the UK and bringing Which... that home and just thinking, I have to get involved. You know, it was, it was, that was really one of the only moments in my life that I've had some, that something like that has happened where I thought, no, whatever I was doing, I have to change. And I, I, I have to, and I was like, where's that, where is that guitar? You know, and I'd, I'd, I'd bought a guitar a few years earlier, but nobody had showed me how to tune it. Nobody, get, I didn't have any lessons. It, it's just like, it just like I broke a string and it got put in the attic. I was like, where is that fucking guitar? <laughs> you know, how do I, how do they do this thing? <laughs> you know, and, and I was off to the races, two strings, that'll do. You know, and, 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 and I could have fun with that. And of course it was awful what I was doing, but I didn't know that at the time. It just felt, felt like fun. And I think that's, that's what they, that's what they gave us. But so much cooler than, uh, than you even realized at the time. It's very hard to uh, communicate how that moment was. Um, you know, there's a great Wordsworth, there's a Wordsworth quote about, he was in Paris for the French Revolution and he talks about to, to being alive in that moment 
was very he- was very heaven. And I really feel that that to be in England, and I was 16 when Anakin in the UK. I was exactly the right age. Oh, totally. I was just starting. I needed I needed somebody to put to put it into words and music. What I was the frustration that I was feeling, and and me and every other kid. I mean, it was like every boy in my class wanted to make music that year. You know, so we were all like banging around, banging cans with each other. You know, I mean, it it, it did it it, it 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 did create a revolution that record. Well, that's a very great. Thank you very much yeah. for for doing this. You're welcome. Uh,